So I've got two particles that I label P and Q. They're constrained to move along a straight line. The velocity of particle P I call VP in the i-hat direction, and VQ in the i-hat direction is the velocity of particle Q. And what I do is I show uh, traces, time plots, of these components of velocity as functions of time. So P is the solid curve, Q is the dash curve, and you notice initially P is positive, which means it's moving to the right, Q is negative, which means it's moving to the left. So these two particles are going to come smack into each other, then bounce off each other, and the final velocities after impact are shown here. So I want to ask two questions. The first is, what is the coefficient of restitution for the two particles? And number two, what is the ratio of masses of the the two particles. So I'm going to tell you, I want to know what mp divided by mq is. So as a starting point for this problem, I'm going to draw a free body diagram. There's my two particles, p and q. And if I draw the forces acting on these particles, this is what I get. My particle p has a gravity's acting down, then I got a normal force acting upward to keep it constrained to this line right there. And similarly for particle Q, I got normal force and gravity acting down and up respectively. And then I have the force of impact. I call it lowercase fpq and lowercase fqp. So fpq is the force on particle P due to particle Q, and likewise fqp is the force on particle Q q to particle p and these act in opposite directions right as they come in as these two particles come in and smack each other particle q pushes particle p to the left and particle p pushes particle q to the right and i'm just looking here maybe it would be more appropriate to put a minus sign right there and a plus plus sign right here now to me having done several of these this looks like a problem that's sort of dying for impulse momentum type approach to this thing so if we apply an impulse momentum type approach to the system of particles, again we're thinking these things as a collection of particles now. So the total momentum before impact, let me just write it over, start writing it over here. So I have MPVP in the i-hat direction plus MQVQ also in the i-hat direction plus I'm going to add up take the integral of, of all the forces acting on the particles. And in doing this, remember I only need the external forces. So I'll put this little superscript EXT there to indicate only my external forces. Again, we're integrating with respect to time. And this has to equal the momentum of the system after impact. So MP, call it VP2 in the I plus MQVQ2 I. And maybe I should put little one decorations on these ones. So VQ1, VP1. Now, of course, the important thing to note is that these external forces here are the, are the weight, the normal force, weight, normal force, right? These are forces from outside. Outside. So the normal force or the weight is earth pulling down on the particle. The normal force is this whatever is constraining this thing to lie on the line. That's pushing back up uh, to balance the weight. See those are external. The internal forces are these lowercase f forces right here, the force due to the impact. So if you look at all the forces that are external to the system, you'll notice that they're all in the j-hat direction, right? There's a j-hat, 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 j-hat. All this external force is up and down not left and right. So if we go and take the just the i component of this impulse momentum equation, remember this impulse momentum equation is a vector. Just pull off the i component, what do we get? What we get is the following. So I got linear momentum in the i hat direction, the horizontal linear momentum of the system before impact has to equal the horizontal momentum of the system after impact. Ah, that's cool. Now the next cool thing is that we've got numbers for most of these terms, right? VP is three units, one, two, three, positive three. So this is three times MP. And then VQ1, it looks like a negative two, so minus two MQ. And then what does this have to equal? This has to equal uh, this, the momentum on the right. So I've got MP times VP2, it looks like VP2 is a positive one. So this becomes 1 MP plus, and it looks like VQ is 2, plus 2 MQ. All right, so what we're going to do now is put all the MPs on one side and all the MQs on the other side. So I've got 3 MP over here and 1 MP over there. Do the subtraction. I've got 2 MPs on the left-hand side. And this has to equal, what do I have on the right? i got 2 MQs I'm going to move over. So 2 plus 2, 4 MQs on the right side. So that tells me that uh, take MP over MQ, I'm going to move the MQ back and 4 divided by 2, so that's going to be equals 2. So the ratio of MP divided by MQ, I'm thinking, is now 2. And there's my answer, so let's put a, uh, put a box around it. 
All right, it's clear that I'm doing these problems out of order. Let's do the first problem now. So we're talking about the coefficient of restitution now, so it's good to go back and think about what this thing means. By definition, coefficient of restitution is a ratio of linear impulses. As I've described elsewhere, this is a really sort of clunky way to think about it when you're solving problems. Instead, when you're solving problems, the way you should think about a coefficient of restitution is a ratio. And this ratio is a, on the top we have a rate of separation. That is the rate at which these two uh, particles are separating from each other, divided by a rate of approach. So in this problem, the rate of separation would be VQ2 minus VP2, right? That's, the, that's how much faster VQ is moving than VP after they, after they hit. And then the rate of approach would be VP1 minus VQ1. And if I were to stick numbers in here, VQ2 minus VP2, that's the difference right here. That looks like to be 1, 2 minus 1, or 1. And VP1 minus VQ1, so the difference here looks to be 5, right? So it's, there's my rate of approach. This gap right here is my rate of separation. So this becomes 0 0.2, and there's my E. Done. Before we end this video, I want to talk about one more problem. And it's this one right here. So it's the same setup we had last time where we had particles P and Q that are constrained to be a, on a line. And this time I have different velocity traces. And it asks me for what, uh, for the velocity plot on the right, what's the coefficient of restitution? So here we go. Here's my velocity trace. Let's find that coefficient of restitution. So I got E, it's a rate of separation divided by rate of approach. So the rate of separation is VQ2 minus VP2 and divided by VP1 minus VQ1, right? It's, this is the exact same thing I had before. So the rate of separation uh, would be 1, right? It's minus 2 minus, excuse me, minus 1 minus a minus 2, which is positive 1. And a rate of approach would be 2, right? It uh, looks like 3 minus 1, so it's 2. So I'm thinking the coefficient of restitution should be 0 0.5. What do you think? But wait a second, let's think about that momentum part as well. So if we do the same exact analysis we did last time, we should find that the momentum before impacts. So MP VP1 plus MQ VQ1. So there's momentum of the system before impact. This should be equal to the momentum of the system after impact. Right, so there's that momentum after impact. Now let's start substituting numbers in. So VP1, hmm. That looks, what I say, 1, 2, 3. So we got 3MP, and then we have 1MQ. This has to equal, after impact, I've got minus 2MP, right? So VP is at minus 2, right? Minus 2MP. And then I have minus 1MQ, right? So these two things must equal each other. And just like last time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all my P's on one side and all my Q's on the other side. So this gives me 5MP equals, put the MQ on the other side, minus 2MQ. No sweat, right? So this means that MP divided by MQ is minus 2 fifths. How does that sound? Well, let's think about this. MP divided by MQ, right? Sounds like a perfectly good answer if we're not thinking about it. But let's think about it. What I have on the left side is MP divided by MQ. What are those? Those are masses. Masses is a measure of a quantity of matter. Mass has to be positive, right? It doesn't make sense to have negative mass unless you have some sort of antimatter or something like that. So masses are positive. Uh, so I got a positive mass divided by another positive mass, so this ratio better be positive. But lo and behold, if you look at the other side of the equation, I get something negative. All right? This cannot work. Something's bad here. So we're going to cross that out. All right? So to look at this and see what's, let's see what's going on. So initially, before the impact, I got particle P moving to the right. Yeah? Particle Q is also moving to the right, but not as fast. So particle P is coming in faster. So these two things come in, they smack each other, and then all of a sudden they both turn around and head back the other way. Particle P shoots off to the left, and particle Q shoots off to the left. Well, think about it, that's crazy, right? They, they both have forward momentum, or right momentum toward the right before they impact, and then pow, all of a sudden they start moving to the left. 
makes no sense. That's what this plot, that's what this velocity uh, trace is saying, and it's ridiculous. And that's why we get a, a mass ratio that, that, that's negative. Doesn't make sense. So this was a trick question. This doesn't have any answer.